stage three, we are going to use CSS to further format by adding class selectors so that we can add properties to specific elements on our web pages. And we're also going to add pseudo class selectors so that we can control rollover effects. And then we're going to add some compound or descendant class selectors. And those will allow us to even further specify properties for elements within containers uh, so that we can just add uh, or change properties to very specific elements. So to begin, I have the permanent exhibits HTML page open. And if you'll notice that there is a padding missing around my main content. So if I go to my CSS style sheet and I go to the main copy ID selector, I have a margin on the right of 50 pixels and it's floated to the left, but I did not add my padding. So somehow I left that out in a previous stage. So that's okay if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it. So I'm going to go to my CSS designer panel and select my CSS style sheet, select the main copy ID selector, and I can see my properties, I have added the width and the minimum height, but I'm going to scroll down now to add the padding. So my padding is set to zero, so I'm going to change that by adding a padding of 20 pixels uh, all around. So I'm going to link that, go ahead and type in 20 pixels, and now it shows up on all sides. And now you can see it change in my design view. So don't forget to add that if we skip that earlier. Okay, so now we've also applied that template to our web pages, our HTML pages. Also, if you notice your site structure, you should have a templates folder that's automatically created for you with that design template nested inside. So make sure you keep that template file in your template folder and don't move that around. So you want to keep that template folder in your root folder and don't move it. So just keep it um, where it initially created it. I'm going to go back to CSS Designer and I'm going to add some selectors. So make sure you select the style sheet here so that whatever we're adding will be added to that style sheet and that will be added across the site since we've linked the CSS style sheet to each web page. I'm going to switch to Live View and then I'm going to type in plus to add a selector and I'm going to add a tag selector using the H1 tag selector. So that does not need that hashtag symbol in front of it because it's just a, a generic tag selector and it's going to give it the H1 selector. So whatever I've assigned in the source code here, whatever is H1, and remember you can only have one H1 element on your page, it will adopt that H1 tag selector property. So select the H1 selector and then go to properties and then we're going to go down to the margin and type in a margin of zero on all sides. So remember, even though the default is zero, we still have to add it here so that it shows up in our code pane. So now if I go to my style sheet and go to the H1 tag down here, there's the top margin of zero that's been added. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to all four sides. And now you can see the code in the code view. Scroll up now to and click on the type and we're going to add a color here to our H1 text. Click on color and use your eyedropper to select the brown color in the logo and then hit return. And now you can see that H1 text is adopting the color that we just assigned it. Then we're going to go to font size and select the pixel size of 30 and that automatically changes to the 30 pixel size. We're going to do the same thing now and create another selector for the H2 subheading element. And so if you have the CSS style sheet uh, in view, you can see that code being added in the code pane. I'm going to adjust the margin for H2 to 30 pixels on the top and the bottom is going to be 5 and then go up to the text and select 
the color and I'm going to sample that logo color again and choose a font size of 24 pixels. And we can see the H2 element now that every instance where H2 is used, it adopts that the properties that we've assigned to it. Now we're going to create another one for H3 and go through and do the same thing and follow the textbook to set the margin on the top to zero. Bottom is 15. The font style is going to be italic this time and the font weight is 400. Create another tag selector for the P paragraph element and we're going to set the margin on the top to zero. Again, even though it already reads re zero, we have to type it in again. And then the bottom is going to be 10. So if we look in our code pane, we can see those added. All right, so since we're having so much fun adding selectors, we're going to add another one. And this is for the A tag selector. And then we're going to add the color for the type. We're going to use the logo. I accidentally picked up the wrong color there, so I'm going to switch to the logo color and make it a uh, font weight bold. And for the text decoration, if you scroll down, we're going to select none because we don't want that underline for our navigation menu because it looks tacky. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we can save. And I can go to File, Save All to save both the style sheet and my web page. Now we're going to create some anchor points. I'm going to switch to design view and go back to my source code. Look for your H2 element. So this one is your H1, the permanent exhibits. Then my first H2 element is the Italian master. So if I go to my source code, I can put my mouse right after the closing H2 tag. And I'm going to type in the following code for the A element, um, which adds properties to the text. I'm going to call it A name equals, and I'm going to give it a name here in quotations, masters with the closing tag. And it automatically closes it for me once I put in that forward slash. So now I'm naming this area right here after H2. I'm giving it, assigning it the name of masters with my A name tag. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add anchors to assign it to the masters tag. So you'll see in design view that anchor symbol now show up since we added that code. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to scroll down my, my page and look for the next H2 element. In this case, it's the gods and heroes, myth and art. I'm going to place my cursor in the code pane after the H2 closing tag and then add that code again. And if I want to, I can even go up to the previous H2 tag and just copy that entire element and paste it into the next H2. So right after the H2 closing tag, I'm going to paste that in. But instead of masters, I'm going to type in gods, because that's the first word of the next H2 element. Oops, I see I have an extra A tag here, so let me get rid of that. OK, so now I've added that A name tag and I've replaced masters with gods, and that's the next H2 element. And you can see the anchor symbol now appear. I'm going to scroll down and click on the next H2 element, and then in my code, I'm going to place the cursor after the H2 closing tag. I'm going to paste in that A name element again and replace masters this time with glass making. and then we'll see the anchor appear. Now I want to scroll up and go to my sidebar and select the text that says the Italian masters in the sidebar. I'm going to go to my insert panel using the HTML insert panel and then select 
the hyperlink element. And that allows me to select a link to the text that I have highlighted. And I want to select the master's hyperlink. So now this text is linked to the master's anchor. So if I click on that, it will take me to the master's. And I see I've got some extra um, text here because I don't, I see I don't have the opening a tag. Oh, I see I have a double tag here. So I'm going to get rid of the extra tag next to the Italian master's H2 heading. So somehow I must have pasted that in after I copied it. Okay, so now I've cleaned up that code. I only have a single anchor for the Italian Masters. And then my sidebar Italian Masters text is linked to the Masters anchor point. Now I'm going to link my other subheadings, my H2 subheading. So I'm going to click on hyperlink for gods and heroes and select the gods anchor point. And then the same thing for glass making. Oh, keep, I deleted the G there. So then glass making in an antiquity, click on the hyperlink and select the glass making anchor point. All right, and so now I've cleaned up the code and the text there. Now I'm gonna scroll down to where I see the text back to top. So if you've ever wondered when you're on a website and it says back to top, how you can link that to the top of the page, well, we're gonna do that right now. So select that back to top text and you can see it in the code view as well. So we're going to scroll to the top of our page after the H1 element we're going to define the top anchor point. So type in that A name equals again um, tag again and type in the quotes top and then close that element. So now we've added the top anchor point to the top right after the H1 and you can see the anchor appear. Now we're going to scroll down to the back to top text and add the link here. I can use my hyper, hyperlink button here and then link to the top. And now this text is going to link to the anchor point that links that we added after the H1 element. So scroll down and add and link the back to top text for all the other sections in our main copy section. And make sure in your text, I don't know why it uh, deletes that first letter and adds that symbol, but we're just going to fix that in the text and then link it to the top anchor. Once we're done with that, we are done with our anchor points and now we can add our pseudo class selector to control some of our rollover effects in the navigation. So a pseudo class selector is just a variation of a class selector that allows us to control how we want the text to appear when we mouse over the text. The A link refers to a hyperlink that hasn't been visited yet. A visited means that's already been visited. You've already clicked on that page or that link. A hover is when your mouse is hovering over the text. And then A active is when you the link is clicked before you release the mouse. So I'm in my permanent exhibits HTML page and I'm going to switch to live view. Go to your CSS de designer and select your museum styles style sheet and we're going to add a new selector and call it the A colon hover and you don't want any spaces. So now I can use my properties and I'm going to scroll up just so you can see the text in the navigation here. So this is going to create the hover effect for the A text in that element. I'm going to select type and select color and use my eyedropper to select a light brown color from this background image. And now in live view, if I click on these elements, it changes to that color that I just selected so I can test that. You can go ahead and save all your files. And now we're going to create a figure and figure caption. 
A figure element can define content for illustrations or photos other related to the text copy and it's just a container that incl can include a nested image and a nested caption within that element. We're going to open up the About page from your Files panel. I'm still in Live View and then I'm going to select this image at the top of the page and then use the Insert panel and I can use the Figure button in the HTML Insert panel. I want to click before because I want to add this figure caption before the image or this figure element before the image and I can nest a caption inside that element. Then go to your DOM panel below here that I and again if you don't see it you can go to your window and open it from there and if I go down I can see where the figure element is and then I can open that by clicking on the arrow and you can see inside the figure element is a figure caption. What I want to do now is move my image into this figure element and you can do that just by clicking on the image and dragging it right on top of the figure. So don't drag it to where you see the green line but just drag it right on top of the figure text and now the image is nested inside the figure element as well as the figure caption. So now the caption is below the image and they're both nested inside the figure element. So the DM, DOM panel is helpful just to see how your structure is, um, how your elements are contained on your page or nested. We can also see what's happening in our source code. You can see that the figure caption and the figure image the image is inside the figure tags as well as the figure caption. So it's two different ways to look at your site, either in the code view or the organization in the DOM pa panel. I want to scroll down now and click on the text that starts with fountain and sculpture to select that paragraph. And then I can see the paragraph selected in the DOM panel. If I click on the arrow, I can see the paragraph uh, elements that are insi nested inside the paragraph. What I want to do is drag this entire paragraph so that it is onto the figure caption element. So I'm going to drag the paragraph element on top of the figure caption. So now within the figure element I have the image and I have the figure caption with the paragraph nested inside and I can look at the code view to see that that figure caption is now contained inside the figure element. I can delete any placeholder text in the code view so this placeholder text can be deleted and now I can see that the text this paragraph here now acts as the caption for this image and again you can review it in your DOM panel if anything doesn't look right you can move it around. I'm going to switch over to the CSS Designer panel, select the style sheet, and I want to add some tag selectors. I want to add a figure tag selector, and I'm going to give it a width of 300 pixels, top margin of 10 pixels, right margin of 0, bottom margin of 10, and then left 10 as well. Now I'm going to scroll down and add a float property and float that element to the right. So now everything in this figure element is floated to the right including the image and the caption. I'm going to add another selector and this time I'm going to call it Big Caption and I'm going to switch to text and give it a font style of italic font size of 12 pixels, the line height, which is like the letting, of 15 pixels, and then text the line to the right. So now my caption is italicized and it's aligned to the right. So this is just for the figure caption. We can go ahead and save it again. And now I want to add my descendant selectors. So I want to format just specific elements here. I'm still in the About page. I'm going to click 
using my tag selector in the bottom left, the section with the main copy. So I can select that entire section with the main copy ID selector. And then I can create a new descendant selector and it automatically assigns it with the name here with the page content main copy. And what I want, I just want to call this main copy figure image. So with a descendant selector, you can have spaces in the naming convention of your selector ID selectors now because we're adding properties to more than one element. So this is going to be to anything with the main copy ID selector as well as the figure tag selector and the image tag selector. So on this page, there's only what a one element that is within the that has the main copy ID selector, it's in the figure tag, and it has the image selector attached to it. And so that's this image right here. So we can be very specific in defining properties just for this element right here. So that's why the advantage of having a specific descendant compound selector. So we're going to go to properties now and give it a width of 300 pixels and then select auto for the height. And that's going to automatically reduce the height to maintain the proportions. So the, three, the width is 300 and the height will automatically reduce to fit proportionally at a width of 300 pixels. So if you notice that selector, that compound selector is only created to adjust the properties for this element right here. Now we're going to add another compound selector and we're going to call it sidebar. So the ID selector sidebar space P for the paragraph tag. So this selector will be to add properties to anything with the sidebar and the paragraph tag selector. So that's going to be adjusting the sidebar text right here. It will only adjust the paragraph elements, not this H2 element. So select that sidebar P selector and we're going to select text and align it to the center. So we're just going to center the paragraph text here. So notice it doesn't change the H2 element, only the paragraph element. We're going to add another compound selector and call it sidebar space H2. So now we want to adjust the H2 element in the sidebar and we're going to go down to the padding and give it a padding of 10 pixels on the bottom, text align to the center, and then give it a border. So I'm going to select the border, the bottom border, and give it a thin width and a style of solid. And then for the color, I want to use my eyedropper and select a color from that logo or select that brown color from the logo. And then the H2 element is formatted to those properties for the sidebar H2 ID selector. So these compound selectors will be added to any time these specific um, selectors are used across the site because we made the changes in the style sheet and because they're ID selectors. Now we're going to create another descendant selector and this time we're just we're not going to use the ID, the ID hashtag symbol because this is just a regular tag selector but it's a compound tag selector so we're going to use nav space P so anything that uses the nav tag selector and the paragraph selector. So that's going to be our paragraph text within our navigation menu. So we want to make this text a little bit larger and align it to the right. So we're going to use the properties panel and go to the text option. And then, then actually I'm going to go to margin first and give it a margin of 15 pixels on the top to give it a little bit more margin space on the top. You can see that drops down. And then in the text, I want to give it a font size that's larger, so I want to select 20 pixels. And now you see the text is bumped up in size, and then I can scroll down and, and align it to the right. Now I am done 
formatting my, my compound selectors and I can go to File, Save All. And if I open up my other pages on this site, such as the permanent exhibits or the traveling exhibits, I can see those changes show up across the site because I made the changes on the CSS style sheet. So if I look at my style sheet, I can see the code for those compound selectors that I've added here in the code view. So again, those tags are only going to be at those properties are only going to be adopted to those specific compound selectors. So anytime all of those elements are assigned, they will adopt those properties across the site. Now we are ready to export our site. So we can save all of our files. Once we've done that, we can close them out. And then we can go to our Manage Sites window and click on the Export, the currently selected site icon. And that's where we'll save the STE site file. And that just saves the settings. So it doesn't actually save all your files, just the settings here. So I'm going to place that, save that inside my museum root folder. And now I can export the site. And so because I saved it as an STE file, I save the settings. So if I were to switch to a different root folder, I can go back and click on import site and select my STE site file and open the settings for that root folder. And now if I open this root folder, the structure of my site and the settings appear. But to turn the file in, you have to submit the entire root folder. So if you're ready to turn this museum file in, in this case it's museum sample, you would control right click on the entire root folder and compress it and then submit that zipped file. So that folder contains all of the files needed to open the file up in Dreamweaver. So make sure that you don't just submit the STE file, but you have to submit the entire folder compressed in the zipped format. And that's the end of stage three for the museum CSS layout.